All right, guys, have you guys heard of dental implants and you're a little bit confused? You're like, wait, I thought dental implants are a single tooth or multiple teeth. What I did was, you know, I created a video talking about the many different applications of dental implants because I know there's a lot of confusion out there. Some people may be interested in, hey, what's going on on TV? I heard about teeth in a day. Wait, my friend got a single tooth implant. We're like, what are dental implants? And I really made this video to address a lot of those questions. Now, if you're interested in dental implants, I've also created several videos before this also. This is a series of videos that I've created over the last few months that over my 12 years of practice here in 2023, um, being a board certified uh, periodontist, having placed 10,000 implants in my career and having seen thousands of patients in my career, I've seen patients have similar questions, similar issues, and what I've done is I compiled all that information in an organi organized manner so that I hope that patients can get the most um, information that they possibly can um, without going to dental school or residency. So hopefully um, this information can really serve you well on your future path with dental implants. Um, so please stay tuned and if you guys like it, please uh, or have any comments, please leave any comments below and give us a follow on our Facebook and uh, Instagram at North Texas Dental Surgery. Thank you and good luck with your dental implant journey. All right, so dental implants, what you must know, part four, prosthetic options. So the question is, how do you save this and how do you avoid this? All right, so why watch this video? Well, you've heard of dental implants, but what are the different types of options like individual implants, implant bridges, all on four, teeth in a day, snap-on dentures. So I know that could be very confusing, right? So what are the cost differentials of all these different types of implant options? Well, if you're informed, you will be able to ask the right questions to make sure you get the right treatment and at the same time, optimize your money, okay? I've seen many common themes in the past. Anybody would obviously try to save money, but I've seen some patients go the cheap route and get botched. And as a result, sometimes they have horrible aesthetic results, can't chew properly, have implants that fail later on, maybe have damage to nerves, etc. In the end, they spend a lot more money to get it fixed. You might wanna watch some of my other YouTube videos talking about a lot of these types of uh, topics, okay? so. But anyways, um, we can link some of those below and also just check out our channel. We have a lot of videos about that. But dental implant treatment doesn't have to be expensive. The goal of my videos are to teach you insider information so you can come as reasonably close as possible to diagnosing like a board certified periodontist. And so some people may say, well, yeah, what do you know? Well, um, I am a board certified periodontist since 2011. I have placed over 10,000 implants in my career and I place dental implants for single teeth, these implant bridges, denture implants all on four. Also, I do normal bone grafting for socket preservation after an extraction, more significant bone grafting with GBR, which is ridge augmentation, sinus lifting, et cetera. And a lot of the bone grafting topics I just talked about in the previous video, um, I would highly recommend that you look at the information below, um, follow the links. Um, I have this series of videos where I talk a lot about dental implants from beginning to end so that you can understand these concepts and really make sure that you maximize your experience, your money, and everything that you're doing with your mouth in regards to dental implants. Um, but also I do perform gum surgery for gum grafting and gum disease treatment because your gum health has a significant impact on your dental implant health over the long haul. So in the previous video recaps, in video one, we mentioned you want to place as long and wide of an implant as possible. And again, I will link these videos below. Um, how much bone you have determines how long and wide of an implant you can have. And in video two, we mentioned how we need to take the maxillary sinuses and the inferior alveolar, alveolar nerve into account when deciding how to size the best implant to your bone. We also discussed how the CBCT 3D scan helps to perfectly diagnose the bone dimensions when deciding what implant to pay, place on you. Most importantly, we also discussed how you want at least two millimeters of bone all around the implant to ensure the vitality of the bone. And if any of this sounds foreign, please watch those videos. In video three, I discussed everything you need to know about bone grafting. All right, so dental implant options. Many times I found that most people are confused about dental implants. People typically associate dental implants as teeth. They say, hey, I need dental implants because I need new teeth. Well, remember in video one, we discussed that the implant is just the part that fuses with the bone. And in this photo, the crown, which is the tooth, is a tooth replica, is a prosthesis, okay? So the dental implant is buried in the bone and done right, you should never see it. Okay, and then the crown is a prosthesis and that's what we're going to talk about in this video because there's different types of prostheses that you can place on dental implants. So the prosthesis is, well, I mean, the dental implants are basically the foundation which you can build on top. 
which that building can vary. So think of foundation for a building. You can build a home or an apartment or an office complex, right? So the foundation would be like, let's say your dental implant. And then on top of that, you could build a home, apartment, office complex, whatever the heck you want to build on top of that. So, oh, I just said it right there. The dental implants would be like the foundation and the prosthesis would be the building. So uh, a prosthesis definition is, it's an artificial body part, such as a fake leg, fake heart, fake teeth, etc. And in dentistry, we have several different options, right? So individual or multiple teeth, you know, so these, and I'll, I'll talk about them right here. So if you're missing a single tooth, then you get a single implant, right? So you place one implant and then you got one crown on top of that. So that single crown is a single unit prosthesis. So if you're missing several teeth, you can do individual implants, like three different implants, or you could do what we call an implant bridge. So get an implant bridge to replace several teeth. So one implant here, one implant here, and then you put this three teeth, which are fused together on top of that. So it's just like a bridge, right? So you have pillars of support and a bridge overpass, okay? What if you're missing all your teeth on your upper or your lower jaws or both? Well, you can get an implant supported overdenture, which we in layman's terms call a snap-on denture. This option is anchored in with at least two implants on the lower jaw and at least four implants for the upper jaw. And this option snaps in and out and is removable when you want to take it out. Okay, so check the information below. I'll link a video where we discuss everything about snap-on dentures, what goes wrong, timing, if you're a candidate, how many implants you need. Um, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, highly recommend you watch those videos um, so you can learn as much about it because there can be a lot of problems with it if not done properly. Uh, what a similar topic if you're missing all your teeth on your upper and lower jaws or both you can get something called an all on four option Okay, or all on six or all on X. Okay, so there's many different variations of names Everyone's branding many different things, but layman's terms most people have come to understand it's called all on four Okay, well this option is permanently screwed into your four dental at least four dental implants um, that are placed in your jaw and patients have the best chewing experience with this option because it is screwed in versus being snapped in. So the previous example, which is a snap indenture, we snap it in, right? It's like buttons, like snapping in, like snapping in your shirt. And this example, you have something that is permanently screwed in. And so check the information below. I'll also link a video where we talk about everything about all on four. Um, and so I don't wanna belabor the point in this video. So how do you decide a prosthetic option? Well, patients typically choose the option that makes the most sense for their lifestyle um, and what makes sense to their finances, right? So what am I talking about lifestyle? Some people are like, you, you will not let me like remove something out of my mouth. It's gotta be permanent, right? So that patient would want like an all on four type of experience, right? Some people may be like, hey, I've been wearing a denture my whole life. I don't care what I use. I could use a snap in denture. I just snap it in, snap it out, take it out when I sleep. So everybody can have all their own options, right? Well, um, and then in regards to like lifestyle. And then also aesthetics can also help to determine what solution is picked because some prosthetic options look better than other options too. So. Um, I made a video about that, so check out our video about doing individual implants, dental bridges, snap-on dentures, or all on four, and the pros and cons of each, so I'd highly recommend you check that video out. So also, let's, you know, the elephant in the room, the price, right? So how does, how about price, right? Well, why not just do a bunch of individual implants? Because, you know, like that seems like the best option. Well, end up, it ends up being a lot more expensive when you do individual implants. There's a larger cost of materials involved for the dentist when doing this option. And also um, there will be much more effort that needs to be done to accurately place the implants. If you saw my previous video about bone grafting, which was a video before this, then you will realize that the implant site for individual implants has to have ideal bone or the individual implants won't look right or they potentially won't last long. And any solution that involves implant bridges or snap-on dentures or all on four allows the dentist to cut costs and pass those savings on to the patient. So um, that's how they really affect the price. So check out the cost of the snap-on denture and the cost of all on four videos that I have and I'll link those below also. So how about aesthetics? I will create another video in the future talking about front teeth aesthetics for dental implants. It is a massively complicated topic. And, you know, I talked about it earlier in the video, like, you know, you see some aesthetic nightmares 
you don't want to end up like that. So it's a very complicated topic. It is a very technique sensitive product, uh, topic and you also need to have a surgeon that is well skilled, well experienced, that knows what they're doing, right? So I'll create a video about that. So um, because of how complicated it is, it also requires more extensive cost, okay? So let's talk about, about aesthetics. In certain cases, of extensive bone loss from gum disease, it may even be next to impossible to achieve excellent aesthetics with anterior dental implants, right? The issue is that the gum levels help determine your aesthetics. If you lose too much bone, you may not be able to simply just bone graft and fix the issue, and therefore the gum levels will be altered and affect your aesthetics. Okay, now obviously I use an extreme example. I just found this off the internet, right? So. What holds your, like, you know, when we look at someone's smile, what makes somebody smile is basically not only the shape of the teeth, because a lot of people will say, well, I want the, you know, I want crowns, I want veneers, like getting the shape of the teeth, that looks beautiful. Well, if your gums don't look right, then it doesn't matter what you do because your, your teeth won't look right. It just won't be aesthetic. It won't have a beautiful smile, right? And what ends up happening is that if a patient due to trauma or a gum disease, or whatever, they lose bone, then what is, ends up happening is the gums start shrinking back too, and therefore start giving you a horribly unesthetic result, right? So this patient, the gums back in the day before the teeth started moving, the gums used to be down here, right? But why have they shrink back so far? And I give people this analogy, think of a tent pole. Tent pole uh, supports the fabric in the tent. If I shorten the pole, then the fabric is coming lower. Same thing similarly with your jawbone. If I lose bone, then your gums are gonna shrink back. Okay, well, when we lose gum and bone, that affects your aesthetics. And I can't just simply just place an implant and expect your aesthetics to be okay if your gum and bone aren't right. And therefore, you want to watch my previous video where we talk about bone grafting and how we can idealize aesthetics. Okay, but in certain cases like this, I mean, this is way too far gone. There's just nothing that even the most skilled surgeon in America would be able to just take out this tooth and put an individual implant in there and make everything look beautiful again. Obviously, you can see in this case, it's way too far gone. So why do I talk about that? Well, here's another example of a patient that has just everything is so far gone. Well, in cases like this, you can't do individual implants. Again, just like we discussed, it's not gonna look right. So snap-on dentures in all on four can have better aesthetics than trying to do a bunch of individual implants, especially in the aesthetic areas up front. I mean, my God, if somebody ever tried to do individual implants on a case like this, not only would they, that would be, that'd be malpractice, right? They would be sending this patient down the wrong path. The patient would spend four times the amount of money and therefore end up with a horrible result. But how this patient goes from here to here, and this is actually a patient of mine, is that the prosthesis, the teeth that we put in there, they actually replicate the gums in the teeth because too much, again, bone and gum was lost. So how do we make beautiful teeth and replicate the gums? Well, that's what we could do with these procedures, the all-on-four snap-on dentures. So please see my video about dental implants or bridge when you have bone loss, and also my video about periodontal disease and all-on-four as an option. And again, I will link that below. So here's another example of a patient of mine. In this example, the patient is very gummy. If we did individual implants, it would be difficult to control the aesthetics because look at her gums, right? So her gum and her bone levels are at different levels and not symmetrical. So one of the aspects of being aesthetically um, harmonious um, and things of beauty is that um, we want to have symmetry, right? So there's defining when you're learning about beauty, you understand that you don't want to have one eyebrow higher than the other or one eyeball higher than the other or cheekbones and teeth. And so your teeth and the way that they're sculpted with the gums, they, they vary in the lengths, right? So how do we establish symmetry? Well, on this patient, we have no symmetry whatsoever, right? I mean, like this, the two central incisors, you could see that one tooth is definitely like way shorter than the other. So if I was to try to do dental implants on this patient, I would have to do something called, and I'm not gonna go into details and try to explain each step of the process, but I would have to do something called aesthetic crown lengthening to even out her gums and bone. And then I'd have to get the teeth out without like much trauma, have enough bone in that area with bone grafting, place those dental implants in the exact same positions, and not saying that it can't be done. It can actually all be done, but the amount of, um, precision and detail and expense of materials to be able to achieve that result ends up what what ends up costing a lot of time and money right and when we don't have to go through that process and we can actually save that patient that money and this is on top of the root canals 
and crowns and all these other things that this patient would need, that this patient then ends up with like a $80,000 treatment plan, right? So this all on four or a snap-on denture and the use of a full prosthesis that's available with an all on four snap-on denture is what allows us to fix this issue with ease, okay? So dentistry can be very subjective. I know some people may be watching this video that are dentists was like, oh no, why would you even take out those teeth? Well, we're only again taking out the teeth that we deem that are unsavable. And also if the bigger solution is that to be able to meet this patient's objective about aesthetics and finances and frustration of consistently going to the dentist every six months to a year and always another root canal or another crown and then this root canal or crown is now going so now it needs to be a replacement and then where they end up spending a hundred thousand dollars in 10 years do we have another option such as a snap-on denture and all on four which would make sense so this video is really for people who've kind of made that argument in their head that you know what the you know i the writing's on the wall and maybe i need to head down this road to looking at this option so if i need dental implants what are my different implant options to go down that path so whether i did individual implants again being very time consuming very costly and aesthetics not even being right versus this solution which is a fraction of the cost maybe i need to consider one of these solutions okay so i have one final word and this is um, I'm, I'm down here in dallas um, been my home for the last 12 years, love Dallas. Um, and this is a highway overpass we have here. I believe they call it the High Five, pretty close to where I live. And so this is a bridge with a bunch of supports, right? And they're crisscrossing all over the place. And what they need to do is they need to ensure that they are strong enough that when all these trucks with full loads, semi-trucks, um, that they basically um, will be supported, that this bridge can support these trucks, right? So. The overpass has to be designed to allow enough trucks with a heavy load, even a max load, to all pass together at the same time and not collapse the bridge. This means that the road has to be thick enough, and that is equivalent to your prosthesis being thick enough, right? So it's got to have enough thickness so it doesn't break, right, when you're biting down. And this means that you need to have enough pillars of support at a distance, a minimum distance apart, right? So this is equivalent to you having enough implants not too far away spread throughout your mouth, right? This means your pillars must also, which were the implants in this example, the pillars, this means that your pillars may be a certain thickness and depth into the ground. So how deep we place that implant and how wide that implant and how, how we bury that into your bone, right? So again, this is equivalent to you having a thick enough implant, a certain length and depth into your bone. And finally, if you have soft soil, which is like soft bone, you should probably increase the number of pillars or implants that you have, okay? And I talked about these topics in my earlier videos, I believe in videos number one and two. So again, I highly recommend you watch the first previous three videos of this series, but it'll really help you to understand that when we do these dental implants, how do we avoid issues in the future and when, whenever you choose one of these prosthetic options, if you want to do a snap-on denture or all on four because it makes more sense, it's more uh, a quicker procedure, it's less time consuming, it's less expense, and it gives you a more beautiful result. If I wanted to go down that solution, well then, how many implants would I need? How, what depth they, do they need to be buried into your bone? What's my bone morphology like? What's my density of bone like? The three first videos in this uh, series will help explain a lot of these questions, right? So my next video, I'll be talking about how long does it take to get a dental implant? How long does it take to have a tooth in your mouth? Meaning not only the dental implant, but when do you get your crown? Um, what about those commercials on TV where you get your teeth in a day? So hopefully that video will help understand, help you understand all those different questions that you may have. All right, thanks, and we look forward to seeing you again.